Good morning, everyone. Jan Hicks, Jan Hicks Creates here. Stitching away, as one does for Stitch Mania. Well, as one does for every single day, right? At least we try to. How are all my wonderful friends today? I hope you all survived Monday. I did. And I'm now looking at a busy Tuesday with some errands to run. So I am getting this video started early today. It is, let's see, oops, where is the camera? There it is, 7.35. Early morning, Tuesday, May 7th. Only 66 degrees here so far, going up to 78. I had to laugh. Somebody commented on my video yesterday that only in Hawaii would 75 degrees be considered a cold front because yesterday I said that a cold front came through. But when you can't consider that at this time of year, you know, we're getting up into the 80s. Um, 75 is a cold front. Or a bit. All right, let me mark off what I've done here. And then we'll talk about what I'm doing. So yesterday, as you know, I was working on the Brick House Sampler. By Brenda Gervais. This one's gonna take a while, but boy is it pretty. I wish I had read closer in her notes. She did coffee dye her fabric before she started and I just love that look. Again the grungy look. I love that look. I wish I had I had done that, but I didn't. So I had said yesterday that I was going to work across and, and put the grass line in um, so that I would have that in place for the future for when I wanted to build out from the house if I got tired of working on the house. So yesterday when you saw this, I had this little triangle of red done here and some of the white done here. And you know, I was so careful counting, but what I didn't notice was that there was a second triangle of red before the grass. So I got all the grass in the whole way across both sides. And then I started working on the, the stairs coming down and realized I didn't have enough room for all of those lines of white. And then I realized that that wasn't completed, that you know there was another section down here I was so mad. <laughs> I was so mad. So I had to rip all that out and I just cut it all out. Just like, grrr, grrr, grrr. So I didn't get the grass the whole way done. There's more on each side. I did one strand going in both directions once I got the stairs in place. So yesterday I got that done. I got the stairs. These lines of white here were done. So I got the white, kind of these white lines here. I got started up the side here, and I started up the, the side of bricks here. So, I mean, that, that is a good portion considering I only worked on this from like five o'clock onwards with, of course, break for supper and dishes. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm happy with the progress I made, but yeah, this one, this one's gonna be around for a while. But that's okay. We like Brenda Gervais. So today my project is Colorful Deer. That is this pretty little kit. And this is, I'm pretty sure, the first pattern I got after I got back into stitching. I think I was just looking at cross stitch on, on Amazon. Um, well, maybe not the first one, but close to the first one and saw this beautiful deer. This is based on um, somebody's artwork. I don't remember who now. Um, the company says Stitch DMC. I don't know whether it's really DMC or not. I don't know whether it's a legit kit. It was on Amazon. I bought it. That's all I know. 
it does come with 14 count ADA and that is what I'm doing what I'm using I just use every just decided to use everything that came in the kit so I have a good chunk of the face done I still have a lot of little details to fill in and of course then there's all the back stitching so again this is going to be another huge one now I marked dummy me I marked the tens with pencil hopefully that'll wash out if it doesn't Again, this was a fun piece. It's not, it wasn't an expensive kit. You know, we'll see. I tried erasing and that just smudged it even more and made even more of a mess. So we're just going with it. What I have is what I have. I won't put any more in. Some of them you won't be able to see because of the darker um, colors of floss, but oh well, live and learn. So anyways, I'm working down just in the background, something easy. Many of you comment that you don't if think you'd be able to stitch and record and talk at the same time, but I just, I generally pick out easy sections so I don't have to do a lot of counting or even a lot of looking at the pattern once I know where I'm going. Get over here in the, in the right view of the camera because the camera is angled differently. So yesterday's um, yesterday's video with the picture in picture and all of that, I didn't get a whole lot of feedback yet. Um, the people that did give me feedback said they didn't really care if they saw my face or not. And quite frankly, it is a lot of work. It took me three hours from the time I started recording the video to the time I started uploading it. It took me three hours. Um, and that's a lot of time, oh, for heaven's sakes, that's a lot of time for just, you know, a fun little video like this. So, oh, I just put a knot in my thread. So I won't be doing that in general. I may do it once I get back to my weekly Stitch With Me videos after Stitch Mania is over. Um, but for the most part, it's not something I'll be doing. Cause it just it just takes up too much too much time and and I don't like the quality you know of my webcam it was slightly better it was slightly better on um, the iPad of course but yeah I just I just wasn't happy with it so I am sorry to those who want to see my face as somebody said I know what you look like. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was Cheryl that made that comment. She's a funny lady. So yeah, I have running around to do today. I've got to get to Costco. It's time for a Costco run. And um, that means I need to get ready and out the door to be there when they open because the Costco's here are madhouses from the time they open. We could go later. Whenever they're getting closer to closing time, they do um, quiet down some. But of course, Mike doesn't want to go after work, and I don't want to be out running around that late, I say, you know, like six or seven o'clock, whatever it is. I'd rather be. That's my, you know, by the time evening hits, I'm ready to just be sitting still, stitching all evening. I don't want to be out running around in the car. But the, the, literally, I mean, if you don't get there at 10, I think I got there at like 10.30 or 11 last week, and I was parked in the far reaches of the parking lot. Now, I don't mind parking in the far reaches. I usually park further out anyways, just so I can basically get more steps in, um, do more walking. But it's just rather ridiculous that... You know, you don't have much choice if you get there much past opening time. So, yeah. I never got a call from the vet yesterday. We got to give them a call and get Sasha in. He pretty much refused to eat all day yesterday, which, of course, is another thing that 
isn't good for his um, glucose levels. He didn't seem to have any issues. He was just being a butt, um, just turning his nose up at the food. And Nina did a little bit too, although Nina, Nina's much, much less picky than Sasha, although she does have her moments as well. So yeah. Um, I thought I would talk a little bit. A lot of you have asked me how I keep my stitches from twisting. And of course, I'm not perfect at it either. But I thought I would talk. I do have a, a Stitch With Me video, one of my um, earlier ones, where I did a tutorial on stitching in hand. I, I did two. One was just basic, you know, stitching in hand, how to manage the fabric. And then I think the second one is where I talk more about how to keep the threads from twisting, what I, what I do to manage the threads a little bit. And I wanted to talk, I thought I, while I was here, because this is a good piece to, to, nice clear piece to do it on, I would talk about it a little bit here. What I really pay attention to is what my, my strands are doing as they're coming out of the hole. Now you can see these two are laying pretty straight until they get up here and there's a bit of a twist. And what I, I, I don't know how to how to phrase this. So when I'm going down in the hole, I care about how how these strands are looking. That's going to make a difference. So if I go, so the thread is here. I could go down here, and in, in this particular instance, it might not matter. I could go down here, and the thread is going to loop around and come like that. Or I could come underneath the thread with my needle and come down. And what that has a tendency to do is kind of lead the thread and have it lay in the direction I want it to. So you'll see it kind of starts to bend that way. And so as it's pulled down, it has more of a tendency to lay flat. Now, it's not perfect, and of course it doesn't help with when the one side gets looser than the other. It's not perfect, but okay, so let's watch that again. So I could go straight down, and the thread would have a tendency to follow, but it might also twist. If I go underneath, it kind of is pushing it up a little bit and getting it ready to go down at a better angle. Does that make sense? So when I pull it through, it just follows through like that. And more often than not, that's what I'm doing. I'm pushing, I'm going underneath the thread so that the thread gets pushed up and kind of in place. And like I said, it is not perfect. And there's still some fiddling and there's still some untwisting that I have to do. But more, not, more, more often than not, it gets it in the right place. I think I just have to skip two here. Hold one. Yeah, I'm skipping two here. So this, um, like I said, this is the Ada that came in the kit. And it was pretty stiff. I think not as stiff as some Ada's, but it was pretty stiff as, as Ada is, especially Ada that you get in kits. But it has loosened up tremendously since I've been working on it. It's still a little stiff over here on this side, but even that isn't as bad. So I got this kit in um, probably July of 2017. So it's been around for a while. So let's look at this again. You can see there's this twist. It's coming out here, the flosses, and there's a bit more of a twist. So I'm going to untwist it a bit. And again, I come underneath. So I'm coming back the other way. I come underneath. And that, you know, there was that twist was down further. 
on the floss. Now I know there is there is railroading. A lot of people do railroad. I have found, and I think I have mentioned this before, I have found that um, railroading doesn't work all the time with the sewing method. There, I think there's something about um, the fact that I'm going down and up both in the same motion that doesn't doesn't allow the, the floss to follow through very well. So you'll notice that last stitch I did not go underneath because of the the the, the strands weren't facing the, the in the direction I felt. I don't know. I'll have to see if it happens again. So looking at this, the floss is heading in that direction, right? Bottom right to upper left. And it's kind of looking like it's gonna look all right. I'm still gonna go underneath it though, and then put my needle down in the hole because that does bend those strands over so that when it comes time to go down, they're laying in the right direction. Same with this one. If I just went down, it would probably go in the right way, but that, that twist back there might get caught. If I go under, it kind of lays it down so it's already kind of there in the right direction. Is that making any sense? Now look at this one. This one, the the strands are like facing the other way than they have been on the previous stitches. Do you see that? How they're kind of leaning to the left instead of leaning to the right? So I'm going to take my needle and just give it a little twist and that sends the floss back heading the other way. That actually twisted it too much. So when I go under and down and up, It's doing it right. Does that make sense? That's really all I do to um, this one. I'm not going to go down and under because I feel like it's leaning the right way to begin with. I don't know. It's really, I've just gotten a, a really a feel for how the floss acts. And I really pay attention to what it's doing coming out of the hole and ready to go into the next one. And it's not like this takes a lot of time. It's just, you know, once you once you get a feel for it, it's I think it becomes just natural. I'm marking off my stitches here, hold on. Anyways, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, let me know. to do this one last row and then I'm going to boogie. Um, so Mike and I started watching Chernobyl last night. It is um, a new HBO series, a mini series based on the, of course, the nuclear catastrophe in Chernobyl. And of course, you know, we were, we were around when that happened. It hasn't been that long ago and you know we were aware of the disaster and, and what those people were going through but boy I assume this is an accurate account um, to see what happened on the ground and how in denial the Soviet state was um, is really rather mind-boggling. You know, you just keep telling lies until you have no truth but to no have no choice but to face the truth. And the people that died now, um, they probably would have died anyways. Of course, we're only the first only the first episode in, so I don't really know on the ground what happens with all of the like the residents of the town. Um, they st did start to evacuate, but I think they'd probably already been exposed enough that, and that probably would have happened anyways, because within the first minutes, <laughs> there was so much radiation in the air. Just, in, just 
oh, insane and scary and all the things. We watched that before bedtime and kind of, kind of weighs on you. My friend Kat in Sarasota, she refuses to watch those kind of shows <laughs> because they are too, too much of a downer. And there are times that I, yeah, I can relate. Kind of like Game of Thrones. Holy cow. I think we only have two more episodes of that left. Now, luckily, each episode seems to be an hour and a half, but oh my god. What in the world is going to happen? I don't know, but I need to mark off my stitches. All right, I'm going to do another row because I still have thread left. I want to get this thing of thread done. So let's see what else is happening. I have to today get started on my small for, whoops, I didn't want to do that. My small for the Smalls Exchange at StitchCon. I know what I'm going to do. Um, Jan, what are you doing? Stop that. Um... And I don't think it's going to take any, too long. I am going to make a practice one. Um, and then I'll do the real one. And I, I don't think it's going to take any, too long. And I, I certainly hope it works out because otherwise I'm kind of screwed. <laughs> but I'd still be able to get something done in time if I change my mind. But I'm going to make a practice one. And then I think I am going to record doing the, the one um, if the practice one works out, because it is, a, I think, kind of a neat, different thing that I plan on doing um, that I think you'll, you'll all enjoy, will we'll enjoy seeing. Um, of course, if it doesn't work out, <laughs> then you won't be seeing it. <laughs> but I, I think it should. It's not like it's anything difficult, really, just kind of different from anything else I've ever done. Um, so anyways, and then I'll have the, the sample to show you guys too. So this, um, thread end, it's getting kind of squirrely. It keeps wanting to come out of the needle. So it loosens up so much. I hate that when my strands get uneven. It is a common problem, though, with the sewing method. Maybe it's a common problem for other people, too. I don't know. But. It kind of makes it more difficult to keep stitches all neat and tidy. Alright, so I think that is it for today. I don't even know how much I was on camera. I think I was for the important parts though, right? I am up to 24 minutes now, so that's a little bit of a longer one. But I hope you got a, a good feel for what I mean by, you know, how I manipulate the stitches and how I keep them from twisting for the most part. It, it's not foolproof, as you saw, um, but it does a pretty good job. And like I said, if you have any questions, just let me know. I am happy to help. So there we go. StitchCon Day 7. Is that right? Day 7? Yep. I, hopefully. I might spend the rest of the day filling in all the parts of the deer's face so that that's done. I just didn't want to do it on camera because there's a lot more jumping around and, um, you know, counting and figuring things out. And that, that would be more difficult. So anyways, I will show you my progress tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. I need to get back into this practice of this. Here, look at the deer for a second. Tomorrow is, oh yay. Tomorrow is my do re mi piece. Silver Creek Samplers. I think I am done with Doe and Ray, and I am on me. Oh, I started the words, yeah, so. And this is the one that I changed the colors, of course. Um, 
to be more of a rainbow type of feel to it. Of course. So anyways, that's coming up tomorrow. For today, more work on Mr. Deer. I hope you guys have a lovely day. As always, enjoy every stitch. Find your joy. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Love you guys. Bye-bye.